Sponsored by Sinkler Heating and Cooling for 24-7 comfort on call. Hello, Brad. I see what you did here. Your big brain, you decided to just show it to us. I just asked the doctor, x-ray me. I need a graphic for my show. That's just kidding. All the brilliant minutes are right in there. Chris, today's story is one of those stories where I personally thought it was jaw-dropping when I found it over okay. the weekend, and it's haunted me ever since. So with that said, let's take that's, a look at exactly what's going on here. That's a heck of here, a build-up okay? right there. So hidden consciousness. Let's stop right there. Consciousness, consciousness, that is hidden detected in 25% of unresponsive patients tested. So let's take a look at what the okay. study was, okay? It was an international team of researchers. They looked at data collected at six different sites over a period of 15 years, okay? They looked at 241 individuals that were totally unresponsive after suffering serious brain injuries, okay? And they used two machines to look at the brain, okay? They used this fMRI and this EEG. So they were looking at pictures and brain wave activity. Okay. And this was the key because a lot of times they'll use one or the other on these patients, but never both of these imaging devices and, and looking at the data there, okay? So with that in mind, the unresponsive patients were given instructions such as, because remember, these people cannot move. Right. Imagine opening and closing your hand. They were instructed to do that, okay, even though they're totally unresponsive. And the scan showed signs of consciousness in 60 of the 241 patients. So these are patients that were believed to be totally in a coma. And look at this, one in four have some consciousness there. So it, it's a game changer. In fact, it changes everything, Chris, because now we need to rethink a number of things. We need to rethink how care should be managed for those classified mm -hmm. as being in a, in a coma or a vegetative state. We need to rethink how caretakers and families interact and talk and maybe music, or do they but need- But we heard that before, right? We it's, have. It's so important to, to keep communication up with Correct. those people, regardless this, if you're getting a response. Yes, but this is, now you can verify right. it. You have equipment that shows that there's something sure. there in one out of four people. Also, assessment with both of these machines should be conducted before removing life support. You know, it's just one of the new ethical and clinical concerns that, you know, they say we need to explore further and you can understand why. Um, and here's a quote, I thought this was um, interesting from one of the researchers. We have an obligation to try to reach out to these patients and build communication bridges with them because they're wondering, are there other pieces of equipment we could devise or somehow delve deeper sure. into what's going on here, okay? If you'd like to read the story, you can read the story itself that was written in plain language at sciencealert.com, but this appeared in the August 14th issue of the New England Journal of Medicine. They have the whole scientific literature there, but it's really an interesting, interesting read. All right, Brett, thank you so much you for that. We'll see you again tomorrow.